Most politicians are said to be one-dimensional liars who would go as far as faking their faith to receive your votes. However, I recently met a Polish city president and former parliament member named Robert Bidron, who openly revealed to me that he is pro-immigration, an atheist, and a homosexual. I'm not an expert by any measure, but I would have thought that this type of honesty could be political suicide, and here he was, an open book, few of his kind in the world, and the first of his kind in Eastern Europe. Hi, I'm Robert Biedron, mayor of the Polish city of Słupsk, and I love to speak to you in English. You have pointed out that I am a little bit nervous, and I just want to go on the record and state that I am indeed a little bit nervous because it's not every day that I meet with a politician. It's also not every day that I sit in a politician's office, so I am quite out of my element. Do you meet many people in that condition? I meet too many people in that condition, and I... This is one of the issues I need to solve because I don't want people to feel nervous because politicians are to serve people. So how can you serve people when people who pay you, and you guys pay me, that I will serve you, are nervous? Uh, I was in the um, Polish parliament, I was a member of the parliament, and I remember when I was uh, visiting other countries in the region, including uh, my own country, there are politicians who are being treated like gods. Before, we used to treat uh, um, the religious leaders as gods, as a representation of superpower. It's a terrible mistake, I think, because at the end of the day, uh, we're usually disappointed of our uh, political religious leaders. I think uh, we should uh, uh, do everything we can to rethink our strategy on politics and finally start treating politicians like ordinary people because they are ordinary people. We are ordinary people. We are getting drunk sometimes. We are watching porns sometimes. And uh, we are uh, 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 sometimes driving too fast. This is politics. Do you feel that a politician is required to personally embody the characteristics and morals of the citizens that they represent? I think they do, but uh, they're hiding a lot. This is a theater, where, because politicians know that people, uh, when they watch politicians, they don't want to see a lot. They want to see on the good sides of politicians. They want to see an ideal uh, person Sometimes they can refer to. It's the same with uh, clerics. It's the same with uh, religious leaders. They want to have an example they can refer to. They, they, they have a goal sometimes to be like they are, like with celebrities. Mm -hmm. It's the same with politicians in today's world. They are kind of celebrities. We are kind of celebrities. So mm, uh, I think it's a mistake, of course. People are uh, looking for easier solutions. Why? Because easy solutions are everywhere. They want politicians to be as fast as Facebook is, Twitter is, uh, Snapchat is, and they want them to take decisions faster, easier, more understandable, and politics is not about that. Yeah. So we are having dilemma, of course. We are having dilemma, which direction should we go? Should we take fast decisions? Well, we can take fast decisions, but then uh, uh, what will be the result of that? Who will pay for the fast decision of politician? You've become a very, very recognizable figure here in Poland. Because I'm using Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and so on also. Was that an intentional move? I wasn't that popular. I'm gay. I'm the first uh, gay, openly gay mayor uh, in Central Eastern Europe, not only in Poland. I was also the first openly uh, gay member of the parliament, not only in Poland, but in Central Eastern Europe again. So, as the only gay in the village, in this Central Eastern Europe village, I kind of attractive for people. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't the case I'm saying, because this region is also now of huge homophobia. So people were beating me up, people were splitting on me, people still keep, they keep sending me a lot of hate speech messages. But uh, I choose the way not to be aggressive towards people. I choose the way to have dialogue with people. 
And I think this works. People like my approach uh, to them. I choose not to drive my limousine, for example, around the city or when I was member of the parliament. I, I used to take bike or uh, a bus to get to my work and it helped because people could see me, they could touch me, they could split on me, they could beat me up and they were doing that. But uh, at the end of the day, it paid people, because people got used to me. They could see that uh, I'm not worse, sometimes better than other politicians. Mm -hmm. uh, so it paid, but I had to work much harder. Because when you are gay or when you are a woman in politics, it's, it's much, dif much more difficult because you need to prove that you deserve being in politics. They will be all the time asking you and watching you. You wouldn't be here if I wasn't Robert Biedron, if I wasn't gay, if I wasn't uh, uh, on the spotlight. Media like this kind of sensation. Yeah. This is quite unusual that we would drive to this particular city. Like, it, it could be Swoops, it could yeah. be Glavica, right? But there's a very special mayor of this city. And I have to be honest with you, when I was thinking about how to ask my questions, I wanted to address basically how do you function as a gay man who is also the president of a city and at the same time I wouldn't like to trivialize your work to that. I, mean, I never heard someone ask Obama how do you function as the first black president it would be extremely disrespectful but how do you manage those struggles? I function all right as a mayor. It wasn't a case when I was in Warsaw in the Polish parliament because uh, maybe this was so new to people that they were reacting aggressively, but now it can cal calm down. In soups, it's perfect. From where do you take the bravery to confront the people who are still aggressive? I watched a very, very disturbing video of you giving a debate, I believe it was in Gdańsk, and there was, uh, it looked like half the students were quite reasonable and normal, and the other half were like the scariest, murderous looking hooligans I'd ever seen. If I want to use this life to live with dignity, I need to act. I cannot, uh, I cannot wait that somebody will change my life for better if I'm not doing anything. So this is a consequence of the decisions I've taken. I, I never dreamed I will be mayor of the city. I never dreamed I will be a member of the parliament. I never dreamed I, I'll, be, I'll be having partner for 14 years yeah. who might be able to talk openly. I wanted to commit suicide when I found out that I'm gay. And look where I am now. So it was worth it. I don't call it bravery. I call it trying to live my life. Tell me, what do you believe is the source of your opposition's anger? Of this fury that I saw in their face in that video? Uh, prejudices, uh, stereotypes, fear. We as Polish society, we are not often confronted with gay people. Why should they know how gay people look like? They watch the internet. It's the same with refugees. We. I remember the same story when we were trying to launch discussion on uh, LGBT issues a few years ago. It, the same scapegoat, the LGBTI people a few, a few years ago and now refugees. So th they have these stereotypes. They hate them. They generalize th their uh, culture. They stereotypize uh, uh, their behavior only because of the color of the skin or the culture. Mm -hmm. If I can ask such a personal question, of course, are you Catholic? Um, and if not, how do you manage? Well, I'm atheist. So, and I grew up in a very conservative part of Poland in uh, Podkarpacie region, Subkarpatian region, which is very conservative. Uh, so I know what it means to be also religiously in minority. It was easier for me to accept uh, my sexual orientation, but I know how many prejudices and stereotypes brings Catholic religion when you talk about LGBTI people. And uh, it's an issue in Poland because uh, still a ma great majority of Polish citizens declare themselves as uh, Catholics and there are also LGBTI people among them. Yeah. And uh, it's not easy. It's not easy because the stereotypes uh, um, are in the Catholic Church for years. Now we are fighting against penalization of homosexuality, but 
uh, those were Catholics who were teaching uh, in Africa or in Asia or in South Af America uh, colonized uh, cultures to be homophobic. I have one last question concerning religion. I also ask as a private citizen of Poland, I assume that in the public schools here in Słupsk, uh, religion class is an option. Yes. Correct? All Poland. In theory, I could really get behind the idea of a religion class if the kids were to learn about various religions of the world, but as far as my understanding is, in Polish schools, it's actually Catholic class, which, unless I'm misunderstanding something, would suggest that Catholicism is the only true religion and anything else is to be dismissed. Well, if you are part of another church, you can also ask for the classes for your uh, religion. Okay. It's not easy. It's not easy because they need to have a teacher, they need to have enough of uh, children to be taught, so it's not easy. But you can ask. Uh, uh, it happens very rarely. But of course, it's a sign for society which uh, religion is preferred by uh, politicians. This is completely unfair, especially that it costs every year two billion zloty. If I had to, it's, uh, f it's four budgets of my city. We have this religion at school, so the religion is to teach us some moral values. And if you compare Polish people to any other nation, statistically, it doesn't show that this investment pays. We are not, not much uh, better people than other nations. So this investment doesn't work. You are known to be very welcoming of immigrants, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I live in Poland as an immigrant myself, and I can confirm that it has been wonderful. Poles have been extremely hospitable. I, I couldn't imagine a better place for an immigrant to live. However, sometimes I have the impression that the word immigrant doesn't necessarily include me. Would that be the correct impression? That would be correct impression because you are not, uh, you are white. You're American, so you have a special status in here. Your city welcomes immigrants from countries other than America. We welcome everyone and we embrace everyone because this city is a diverse city, city built by immigrants. Uh, this city uh, wasn't Polish 70 years ago. It was German. There is only a small, tie, a, a tiny mi German minority which is which can say they're not immigrants here. All the rest are immigrants. And that's why I also don't understand why people in Poland, the country of migra uh, migrants, uh, people who have in their DNA, in their code, being an immigrant, uh, are so xenophobic. We are so proud of uh, being the country of solidarity yeah. with big S. But when we talk about small s, solidarity written by small s, we are not uh, passing the test. Now you can see the on-cut version of this interview on my Facebook page by clicking here. And when you're on my Facebook page, make sure you send me your suggestions for what episode I should do next. Hit subscribe on the Cult America channel and thank you for watching.